reporters here with you to get you through the mid-morning hours. The Weather Channel helping you plan for all of your big events ahead. And we've got you covered. Here's what we have on the show today, talking about the travel problems. Everyone has a story right now, mm -hmm. I feel like, with some a delay either that affected them or affected someone they know. Yeah, absolutely. Whether it's the storm we weather or just things getting a little more crowded yes. and other issues that you face yeah. at the airports. Yeah. Big weekend coming up, 4th of July. We yeah. need to know about the beaches, right? Yes, exactly. So we'll talk more about safety and uh, the flag system, which I know a lot of you have right. questions about. So we'll... Important. Yeah. Red, Red flag. flag. Knee deep. Too deep. Too deep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, the hot, hazy times and stormy. Still ongoing this morning. These storms have been certainly holding their own all night long. We're not really seeing any signs of weakening. And two main clusters of storms, two complexes, if you will. So we're watching both of these, one from Nebraska and Iowa down into parts of Kansas and Missouri. You see along this, there's several different warnings. There's several different cells in particular that we want to highlight. First, the one that's going towards St. Joseph. Uh, this for Atchison, Savannah, St. Joseph. This goes until 845. There's a considerable threat. Most of these have winds in excess of 70 miles per hour, along with golf ball size hail, if not even larger. So that is a concern. You can see that cell moving there from east to west. Then we jump up to Athens uh, and watching for that cell too. Here, this isn't that's in Missouri. That's going to be heading over to uh, along I-35. All right, here we go to that one. Uh, Athens, Bethany, and Gallatin. Uh, this one, too, has that considerable tag. We're talking about winds in excess of 70 miles per hour, golf ball size hail, a possibility. The storm itself just looks pretty fierce, right? I mean, you don't expect to wake up looking like this with thunderstorms, but that's what we're dealing with this morning. And they're not moving terribly fast either. They're moving at about 25, maybe 35 miles per hour. Uh, so, unfortunately, they're going to be sitting over the areas that they're impacting here for longer than you may like. Let's track this one east. We're going to take this to Bethany, Trenton. Morgan, 811, 839, A52, and then if, if it holds together, this is outside of the warning area, but if it holds together all the way over to Kirksville at 1003. So we'll be tracking that and keeping an eye on that as well. This whole zone is under severe thunderstorm watch. It goes until 1 o'clock this afternoon, and that does include Kirksville. We're anticipating storms to come in here. If it's not that one, it'll, it'll be another one. We're watching this whole area over towards Quincy in Illinois uh, with those thunderstorms on the move. Then we jump down to this batch, which is approaching here from parts of Indiana and then now down to almost northern Kentucky. Thunderstorms here moving east. With this, we could see, I saw some uh, risks of hen egg size hail, so some bigger hail. That would be two inch or greater. Uh, Paris, Sims, and Wabash. Uh, this one here, this is in Indiana. We're watching this cell again for all of those risks, including winds in excess of 60 miles per hour and the hail. Uh, thankfully, the tornado risk has not been that high today. It's been mainly wind and hail this morning. And this area also under a severe thunderstorm watch, a separate one. This goes through 9 a.m. local time, and we're going to be watching for these storms as they continue to roll into parts of Kentucky. Let's go down here into, uh, this is in Indiana, where we've got Boone, Booneville, and Carter. This is going to be an area, Linville, over towards Carter, Boone as well, where we could see winds in excess of 70 miles per hour. Uh, hail that could be two inch size or greater. That's hen egg size hail or greater. Significant damage possible out of that. And that has a little more of a southeast movement to it. So we're tracking it to Carter. Uh, that would be 808, Santa Claus 817, Huff 832. And we take it outside of the warned area if it makes it that far to Candleton at 856. Just to give you that early heads up, this is tracking your way and that's the timing of where it's going. This watch uh, is in effect until one o'clock this afternoon. So we've got numerous areas that we're starting with right out of the gate this morning with severe weather and we know the atmosphere has a lot to give us today unfortunately when it comes to ingredients for storms so Greg Postel let's talk more about what's coming our way yeah of this and there is some apparent rotation as you can see right in here just near Greensburg this is in Missouri this is just south of uh, 136 route 136 so actually watching this kind of whole broad area and then a tighter area of rotation within this it's moving to the east is what we've been tracking and again this particular portion of the cell is apparently moving very fast so let's uh let's continue watching this here you can see that kind of moving right into that area very rapidly that's the zone just north of greensburg that we are watching there may also be some hail as well as just severe straight line winds as well that's a potential across this area we're going to track 
track it to the uh, east northeast sand hill 1003 gorin 1008 you need to be in your safe room immediately because it's moving extremely fast so immediately getting into that interior room put as many walls between you and the outside as possible a basement would be ideal a storm shelter ideal as well but you know if you don't have those options interior room closet bathroom without windows so we're also tracking it just outside of the warned area towards Cahoka 1020 Revere 1023 to give you that heads up here in case it does indeed hold together and keep moving and this tornado warning is within a whole zone that could see some extreme winds in excess of 60 or even 70 miles per hour we're watching several warnings this other one <clears throat> here towards uh, Chillicothe and Yellow Creek this goes until 1015 you can see the text on the warning that says considerable that's because extreme severe thunderstorm winds we consider 60 miles per hour but when you're looking at 70 maybe even higher that's what we're worried about here and that's why that tag on it is for considerable it's possible too that we could be getting some hail too, maybe golf ball size hail out of this this also is moving fast moving at about 65 miles per hour pretty fast movement now in some of these storms especially uh, considering some of the ones to the north have some apparent slower motions now let's uh, take a time at uh, timing out of this lingo 1004 Macon this is all in northern Missouri by the way Macon 1021 Clarence 10 31 and then we take it outside of the Warren area to continuing to Shelbina 1042 just to give you that early heads up for where this is going. These storms are not just under warnings but in a watch area meaning that conditions are ripe for possible storms to go severe. If you're in a watch have that plan ready for where you will go if there's warnings and then be ready to take action when a warning is issued that's when you go to your safe place. So watching that whole zone you know because it's a severe thunderstorm watch you get this telling saying that well severe winds and hail are probably going to be the overall main threat, but can't say there won't be tornadoes. We have that tornado warning active right now there in northern Missouri. We also have another area to watch here in Kentucky and Indiana. A lot of lightning with this cluster of storms. It's been ongoing. Let's go ahead and look at those lightning strikes. Nearly 3,500 lightning strikes in just the last 15 minutes, and this has not been changing. If anything, maybe there's more. Uh, and so that trend tells us these storms are not weakening. They're holding together, and they might even be strengthening. We watch these now sinking south the storm motion is really telling of just the whole pattern that we're in so now you see these these storms kind of sinking south almost from due north to south this is in ohio county this includes beaver dam Beta and Hartford. This goes until 10:15 local time. Winds in excess of 60 miles per hour and perhaps some quarter size hail, <clears throat> a possibility with those. We're going to watch those storms. That that motion will continue, so they'll keep sinking south. So communities like Bowling Green will be a part of this. Travelers on 165, you're already dealing with it to the north. But get ready, this is going to be dropping south. I mean, this is almost just following the interstate. Look at that here. That's going to be just a terrible ride here. A wall of rain you're dealing with here. Very tough visibilities. Ponding. Of water and, and by the way there's a couple of flash flood warnings up in the zone as well so rainfall has already been heavy and expected to continue kind of back building across this area you know, Greg I wanted to point this out how these are kind of back building right here so that corridor of instability is now really uh, the storms are tapping into it right and it's almost like survival of the fittest the ones that are hanging on are the ones that are closest to the instability that's why they're not deviating much from that arc that you were talking about yeah, Jen that's yeah, a really good point yeah. let's have a look at the outlook now from observations and your visibility still reporting that smoke and just look at the wild wildfire situation we're not quite at 90 million acres but we are almost there it's worse than yesterday here it's a really tough season I mean in the season in in theory doesn't usually begin yet here it might begin a little bit but you know we're, we're sort of getting into that heart of the wildfire season in Canada and it's been very rough for the folks living there and they're dealing with the smoke and that has been infiltrate, infiltrating us here into the northeast again for a second day in a row we've got air quality alerts Wisconsin Michigan Indiana parts of Illinois and Iowa all through Pennsylvania New Jersey Rhode Island look how widespread it is New York State the entire state and it extends down through Maryland parts of North Carolina South Carolina Georgia Yes, there are some issues with the smoke all the way down there. Other problems, too, in the south. But the, the heart of the smoke and where you're just closest to the source is where it's the worst. And Chicago, case in point, we've been in very unhealthy going back nearly nearly 48 hours. We finally jumped down to the red category out of the purple, which is very unhealthy. But it's still unhealthy, and it's very close to that very unhealthy when you look at the levels. Um, looking for another tough day, Indianapolis, Columbus. Now, eventually, I think in parts of Ohio, we'll see some improvement today just watching those wind 
winds change direction later on, which is key. But we have DC. Our air quality started going downhill yesterday. It's still tough with the red zone here, unhealthy. And unfortunately, not just can you just see it, you can smell it and it can affect your breathing. Want to talk quickly about other spots. Philadelphia, you don't have good visibility either. And that's because of wildfire smoke in the air. It's not as bad in New York City or maybe Hartford as we had that last go round. But just keeping in mind here that this is a factor in the air and you might be affected by it with your breathing. Alex. Absolutely. Well, you know, from flooded. Uh, happy swarm. I think so, too. To an extent. <laughs> but yeah, that's not a bad one. Yeah. All right, Thomas. Good stuff. Right. <laughs> keep the comments and I keep voting. I had not considered that. I hadn't either. Look at that. Cancel them over a current. Yeah. They move fast. Uh, and so there's there are some strategies. We're going to talk about that. We just want to highlight, though, so far this year that there have been 60 deaths in the surf, 27 of them in Florida. I mean, it just seems like this is a little unusual. I mean, we certainly see this every year, but yeah. I mean, 27 there for us just in Florida alone and this year? 55 of those 60 were because of rip currents. Oof. I think it's been a tough weather pattern, yeah. especially in the Florida yeah. Panhandle. It's been especially tough the last several weeks, kind of peak season, right? So when it comes to rip currents, there's over 30,000 rescues every year in the U.S. And it's often hazardous when it doesn't look that dangerous out there, maybe two to three foot waves. Yeah, and you don't have to have like bad weather going on. You can have beautiful sunny skies. In fact, that's like the worst when it's beautiful out there. You get into those waters that can be dangerous and you get into problems. Yeah, when you see the wind just directly on shore blowing those waves in here. That's the type of weather condition that can lead to that. And especially when it's a really strong onshore direct flow in. And it, that depends on what the orientation of the uh, the coastline is. There's a moderate risk out there in spots today. There's no high risk, but but know this, even on moderate days, there can be rip currents. Yeah, and even on low days. Even on low days. Exactly. Yes. So uh, watch that the south portion of Long Island. Uh, that's the one zone that's under the high risk, but you can see a lot of moderate here for us up and down the east coast. Okay, reminder of the beach flags. When you have a double red, that means the beach is closed for swimming. Do not swim. Pay attention. Look for the flags. If you don't see it when you're coming in, look around. Maybe you have to go down a beach to the next walkway or something like that, but it's important to know. Uh, and also, red flags are dangerous days. Now, you can swim, but, um, you know, yeah. knee deep, too deep. Too deep, exactly. Situation. No doubt about it. All right, well, let's check out what's going on there along the shores or outside of the shores in the middle of those waters. Because let's go ahead and check in with Dr. Greg Postel and talk more about today's storms. At the moment, they're not affecting any major hubs, yes. but they could. So, yeah. Craig, let's. Uh, I do wonder actually how much that'll affect the heat in places like Atlanta. Yeah. So, you look at our temperature today 94, mm -hmm. it's going to be hot. If there's a lot of Cloud cover, maybe it's just high cirrus, but yeah. it could it be. It could, just a couple of degrees. A yeah. degree or two. Still, yeah. it's hot, and it gets hotter. It does. Uh, 98 on Saturday, which just so happens to be the day, the hottest day it will be so far this year, the day I'm going to have to be outside. Of course. <laughs> oh, that's right. you got a big concert. Yeah, exactly. Oh, this is going to be fun, <laughs> fun though. Time. Man, you're going to be bopping and sweating out there. <laughs> yeah, got to stay hydrated. Yeah. All right, well, it's not just Atlanta. We've got this widespread. I mean, there's the jet stream, the gatekeeper of the cooler weather. That's staying well to the north. So south of that, warmer times. We've got that here for the day. Really extreme numbers yeah. that we're going to have to deal with. Yeah, you know, Greg showed the storm track around it, and the fact that we have that continual storm track around it is this, this isn't going anywhere. So we keep it going with the heat indices up above 100, even above 110. That's why the excessive heat warnings are up. Look how widespread this is, all the way up into Missouri and Illinois and Kentucky. There's a lot of people having to deal with this. You say, they say misery loves company. Lots of company in the heat department here. This is just going through tomorrow, but... Yeah. The heat will last beyond tomorrow, I promise you that. 102 in Dallas. See, we've been in the hundreds all week long. Yeah, here we go. 99 in Houston. Does it matter? Because <laughs> it, it still feels yeah, like it's above that. It's going to feel like yeah. it. Some records could break as well. Uh, Springfield tying the 100-degree mark there for you with the record. Also in Shreveport, 101. That would tie a record for your day could help better predict the rapid intensification of hurricanes. It involves the level of salt in the ocean. Hmm. Well, National correspondent Justin Michaels found out about the new technology that made this surprising find possible. It's only the tip of the honeycomb. From building new nests to clearing debris from the hive, there are plenty of chores to go around. And they all have their job. Well, this morning we are joined by beekeeper Christine. A swarm of bees. So tell us about that and how it's good for the hive. So yes, um, I, initially I wanted to expand. Queen bee was because you thought it might do better in the winter months with the cold. Do you think this new swarm will do that? 
So, you know, can just allow them to get a drink. They, it takes a lot of water to make honey. It's, wow. I've learned so much from I know, it, I, I've learned a little <laughs> yeah. bit myself as well. So yeah. again, uh, thanks so much uh, there, uh, our beekeeper there, our uh, friend of the show, uh, Christine yes. Rhodes there, always helping us out with the bees. All right. Watching that swarm video and understanding the importance, I kind of want a bee swarm because I would feel like I'm doing my mm. part, right? Okay, okay. Would you go collect them or would you? Well, I would call Christine. Call somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> obviously. Right. All right, yeah, let us know. Uh, we love to hear from you. Vote, vote, vote. And of course, we want to see your comments. A lot of them in there. there. Can you name them all is uh, the game, right? Yes, right. <laughs> I'm worried about the storms. There's a chance tomorrow. Uh, there's a chance today. There's yeah. a chance tomorrow, and there's another chance again on Saturday, not to mention that smoke out there. You saw that right now. Yeah. But that should be getting better later today. But Fingers crossed. A lot of weather. Absolutely. All right, well, let's get you to uh, my city pick as we head toward last hold. Hmm. Well, we've got some excessive heat watches. They are in place starting on That's Saturday. Clue. Yeah, that means things are starting to heat up here for us. We knew it wouldn't last, right? Vegas is going to heat up, and that's exactly what But are what's they going to break that record? That is the question. We shall see. Today, 99, I think, is the forecast. Easily we can get to 100. Yeah. Tomorrow but we're going to be not right either, there. You know? Yeah, you might not. Today and tomorrow is going to be very close. I think we have a chance of tying the record. Beating it, though, Saturday it's going to get like so 108. Close. Like a, it comes down to the wire, literally. It really is. So we're yeah. watching this closely. We'll see what happens yeah. in Vegas. Uh, either way, it's going to start yeah. to get hot. So be a ready for that. A lot of suspense on these kind of forecasts. <laughs> this is where it matters, 99 or 100. Sometimes Absolutely. we're like, oh, what's it matter? It's a, mm -hmm. Nope. This could be a record. For record keeping, it matters. <laughs> All right, our question of the day. If you get to this insect invasion. Well, in our scenario the invasion is happening <laughs> right okay. well jim says hey guys really interested yeah. interesting to see who wins this i will uh, have you seen who's winning yet? no i haven't i'm gonna go it. check all right yeah. in the break that's what we'll be doing is seeing who's winning yeah i voted for insects i'd rather Ooh. take the insects you would so okay well i okay. love the heat i just want to be like I back closer towards the ohio river valley so it's these two complexes these two clusters where we're finding some big problems these are ridge riding complexes of storms around that big ridge of heat that we have and they have a lot of energy to tap into which is why they've been producing such fierce winds already these storms have a history of damage coming across northern missouri and right now we've got a couple of warnings tornado warning uh, we do believe this is going to be allowed to expire but it's still in effect right now and it's just in between fort madison and keokuk there we go that's until 11 o'clock, so if in these areas here, including Fort Madison, you want to make sure you're getting into that safe zone. A basement, if you have, if not, low floor of a sturdy structure and getting away from the windows is where you want to be. We've been watching the Doppler radar indicated rotation with this thing as it was back towards the west. This actually was uh, confirmed and cited by local law enforcement of, uh, that a tornado was there. So take this storm seriously and get into that safe zone uh, yeah. immediately. This is all a part of a whole area where damaging winds are going to be a big risk as well. Pushing yeah, I mean, eastbound. Winds themselves are going to be very strong, potentially 80 miles per hour. We've seen that reported already from this complex as it's moved across northern Missouri. Um, also, you'll notice the tag on this says um, tornado possible. And so it, it, there is the, there could be some spin ups along the leading edge here, but we think some strong damaging winds is the biggest threat. So we want to track this whole line and move it east for you. It's moving fast at about 60 to 70 miles per hour. 55 right now? 55 miles per hour. They have been hauling, that is yeah. for sure. So they'll be on top of you before you know it. Uh, there you can see timing out again the whole area uh, as it pushes east Macomb at about 11.08. So within the next 10, 15 minutes or so, it'll be on top of you. Bushnell 11.20, Havana at 11.45. And again, we're putting some of these areas that are not under a warning now because we do think that this thing is going to hold on to the, its strength and continue to push eastbound. So just be prepared. Canton, Havana, even around Peoria. Just after noon, this could be on top of you and you could be experiencing some of those strong winds. You are under a severe thunderstorm watch in some of those areas and I just mentioned. That means that conditions are ripe for severe weather to form. Uh, when you're under warning, that means that it's imminent or occurring, and that's when you need to seek shelter and seek action. You know, we talk a lot about these warnings. Uh, the winds are so extreme that I would not be in your home in a place where a tree could come crashing yeah. in. You don't want to be caught in your car where a tree could come down on top of it as well. Yeah. Um, it's, it's winds that are that intense that could take down trees. And we've seen a lot of that uh, already, right? Yeah, There's a lot of trees yeah. coming down out there, so yeah, be a lot mindful of that. All right, let's take a uh, take it to Dr. Postel to kind of look at uh, sort of where these storms are headed. We do think that they're good. <laughs> oh, either way, they all had a blast. Yeah. And uh, cool. Yeah, exactly. It's all fun. All right, well, thanks so much, for, so much for choosing America's Morning Headquarters here with you to get you through the mid-morning hours. The Weather Channel helping you plan for all of your big events ahead. And on the show today, we've got a look at all the travel troubles which may be out there ahead of the holiday storms. I mean, we're already dealing with them. They're already severe. And it's only...
10 o'clock Eastern. Yeah. And the ones that we have ongoing now are probably going to last with this for much. Worried about that. We'll talk more about the timing and yeah. show you where. Now, of course, we're talking about a lot of this heat and a lot of areas to go to cool off, including the beaches. But you got to watch out. Flags. Look at the flag that's flying there behind us. It was a red flag. What does that mean? We're going to detail what that means and how that plays into being safe. All right. All of that coming up. Plus, uh, got to talk about the heat. <laughs> we do. Hazy, hot. Another stormy day, and you know, every single day this month, we have had a report of severe weather, whether it's hail, whether it's wind, whether it's a tornado, and today is no different. So thunderstorms are going to be quite fierce, it looks like, from Iowa down towards Kentucky. That's where we will most likely see the worst weather. Weather We could see a tornado within this as well, maybe even a supercell, which is one of those big rotating thunderstorms fire up. And it's not only tornadoes. We have to worry about hail, damaging hail. In order for it to be considered, Considered severe weather it has to be an inch or more in diameter. We've got two inch hail for us here and also winds could be quite strong damaging as well. 70 mile an hour winds. By the way, a severe wind is considered 58 miles per hour or more. So what causes all of this? Well, when you get some stronger winds to punch into an area and that jet is coming right over us. That means that you're going to energize the atmosphere and cause things to really pop off. And you can see that on our water vapor imagery, we already have just a pop off here of moisture and uh, thunderstorms moving through Nebraska. And all of this, as Jordan was mentioning, is riding along the edge of our high pressure. Under our high pressure, you have sinking air. Thunderstorms need lift. And so they ride right along the edge and we call those ridge riders. There's plenty of moisture for these. We don't have to worry about that. Sometimes you see 
thunderstorms going into dry air, you're like, oh, they're going to croak. Not these guys. Uh, multiple severe thunderstorm warnings for us. And look at our dew point temperatures. You really need mid 50s or higher for severe weather. And we certainly have that and then some. So there are your severe thunderstorm warnings already posted. Kansas, Nebraska, Illinois, all the way into Indiana. And we anticipate more of these as we head through the day. It's not all about daytime heating. Right. If you look at the winds and the shear happening in the atmosphere and the moisture, you can still get storms when it's nighttime. But that daytime heating just can enhance things for us here. And there's a look at uh, McLean County. We have a severe thunderstorm warning in between Bloomington and Pontiac down towards Terre Haute. We also have a severe thunderstorm warning rough ride there from Effingham up towards Indianapolis on I-70 this morning. And we do have just a sliver of a severe thunderstorm watch until 9 a.m. But that is going to be expanded, I'm sure, as we head throughout the day. Watch as we go hour by hour and showing just just this huge cluster. Do we have, you know, a couple of those coming through? Look at the winds with this. That is going to cause damage. I mean, you can just tell by the look of that. And then this cluster of thunderstorms will just continue again to ride down the east side of that ridge, Jim. So there's the thing. This is continuing. The heat is continuing all the way through the holiday weekend. We're right. not going to get a break. No, it's just going to move around a little bit, right? Exactly. Mo moves around uh, a little bit. Yeah. A little shift in here and there. A little, little, little boogie. We'll be traveling as we head over the next handful of days. Of course, we have the 4th of July weekend coming up here. And boy, oh boy, are we going to have to deal with some messy weather. Right now, everything is calm and cool. Yesterday, we did have a bunch of delays and cancellations. We could see some more issues today because we will see thunderstorms firing up here. And so Chicago, Denver, SFO, San Francisco, you could run into some issues through the day today. But I'll tell you what, it stays active through the entire holiday weekend. So things might get slowed down. Right now, if you're traveling along 80, that's where we do have some of the heavier showers. The strongest storms are just to the south of that. So maybe if you're trying to get to the highway, you're going to have to meander through these thunderstorms or just drive through them. And some of our hail, two and a half inches. That is pretty sizable. That's coming on down, and that certainly can cause damage in Fairbury. And if you're going up 25, we could also run into some of those stronger thunderstorms. The same on 80. This is a huge highway, very heavily traveled. So if you are doing that trek from, say, Davenport to Des Moines all the way into Grand Island, then and you are going to have to make sure that your windshield wipers are in good working order and you've got your lights on. And Jordan, still, rain in New England. It's like, mm -hmm. enough already. Just like, get out of here. Well, on the other... It's Thursday, June 29th at America's Morning Headquarters, and look at the smoke. Oh, the wildfires from Canada are really just pouring all this poor air quality across the border and making the air hazardous for millions of Americans yet again today. Air quality alerts are posted for 20 states, most of them in the Midwest and the Northeast. And check Air Force One barely visible ghost plane as President Biden makes a visit to Chicago on Wednesday, Cleveland, Detroit, Pittsburgh, Philly, and New York, among other major cities that will be shrouded in gray haze today. So a look at the smoke forecast does show that we are going to see more of it coming in today. We are going to see improvements, so it is coming, but today is going to be not great. Into Friday, we could still see some haze, but we're going to get a shift in our winds, Jim, and rain coming in so that will help improve conditions over the next couple of days yeah it should hopefully it'll get a little this is in nephews uh for you know prezi for yeah. one of their birthdays or holidays or whatever and they were obsessed it's with so it. fun it's the best thing I, I haven't been on one either in a while though i wonder if i could still do it or if it would hurt <laughs> <laughs> when you go down it. All right, so here's a look at the severe weather reports that we've had. By the way, if you look back, and I've been looking this morning, we have had severe weather reported every day this month, whether it's an inch of hail or a wind gust of 58 miles an hour or higher or a tornado. There's been one of those at least every day this month. It's been just incredibly active for us, and we've seen big-time hail. In the last 24 hours, Colorado, Nebraska, Wyoming, three, four inch hail. So it's really getting up there, baseball size or greater. Now, it's nothing's going to change as we wrap up this month. More storms are cutting right across uh, the plains for us. Nebraska, almost the entire state could be dealing with not only the hail, the damaging winds, um, but the threat for big hail in southwestern Nebraska, 80, 76, down to 70. Two inch or greater for us. Deer Trail, Sterling. Two inches is going to cause damage. So what we have going on is we have this 
trough and then ridging going like that. And so what that allows is this is our storm track. So all of our storms are just gonna ride along this. And I, I hate to write them as lows because I think for just, you know, in layman terms, I should just draw them as kind of thunderstorms like this going around the ridge. But in theory, these thunderstorms are tiny little lows if you wanna get super technical with all that. But essentially, long story short, you're gonna have bad weather. It's going to be rough. We can actually take you into Nebraska and show you, show people exactly where Superior is. I'm assuming it's gotta be in this vicinity, southeastern portions of Nebraska, because that is where we have some of the most intense thunderstorms for us right now. And that's where we do have our severe thunderstorm warning. So there's into Beatrice and all along Lincoln, down into Northern Kansas. We have some of those stronger thunderstorms too. We've already had reports of two inch hail. That is bigger than golf ball. Golf ball is one and three quarters and we're still just going to have an energized atmosphere through the day. So severe thunderstorm watch anywhere in yellow. We're going to see more of these posted as we go through the day spreading eastbound. It goes until 1 p.m. So as you see, these are going to get expansive and last longer. Here is one cluster of thunderstorms. Models are picking up on this nicely. That is going to be going east. And you'll be able to see as we go through the forecast how nothing is just going to go due east. You don't see any of these storms just cutting across the area. They all are going to get shoved around this high pressure because they need lift, Jim, and under a high, air is sinking. And you can't get thunderstorms really to develop under that. Nope, you need some cold air.